I'm Chuck Raymond. This is my wonderful wife, Linda. And I believe we, we may be the first couple to uh, give a testimony together. So um, thank you for, for being here. Hello, my name is my name is Linda, and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. You know what? Go one at a time. Go close to the microphone. Okay. Hold it. Like move it up towards you. Move over a little bit so you can get closer into it. All right. My story is one of great sin, sadness, and emotional turmoil. With a profound desire to help others. I have come before you today to become silent no more. Just two weeks ago was the 31st anniversary of my abortion. The year was 1976, and after just seven months of dating, I found myself facing an unplanned pregnancy. Total shock does not begin to describe my feelings when the pregnancy test came back positive. How could I tell my parents? I was terrified. I went to Planned Parenthood, where the counselors there told me it was just a blob of tissue, and they would take care of it with a simple procedure. After just one appointment, my problems would be solved. Just a few days later, my mother confronted me about my morning nausea, and the truth came out. When she learned of my pregnancy, she quickly decided that the, the abortion was the only way out. 18 was just too young to carry a child to term. The shame and embarrassment of having a teenage daughter unwed was just too much for her to handle. So my procedure was scheduled for just one week later. I will never forget the sound of the vacuum suctioning my child from my womb on that frosty January morning. The overwhelming bleeding and pain that went on for days was horrendous. The abortion doctor told me that that was normal. I went home and cried in the darkness of my room, all alone, wondering if I had taken the life of a son or a daughter. Many years of depression, medications, therapy, and suicidal tendency, tendencies followed. At times, I didn't want to go on with my life, knowing that I had killed my baby. Later in life, I felt very undeserving, as God had blessed me with my two healthy children. Every year on January the 10th, my self-hatred will take over as I recall my painful past. We have attempted to put our agony behind us by attending an amazing three-day ministry of forgiveness and grace called Rachel's Vineyard. I will tell you now that this, is, this was the most profound experience that we have had to help us deal with our abortion. Many of the counselors there were also post-abortive and understood our trauma and our brokenness. The compassionate priests and counselors were very gracious in administering the sacrament of reconciliation and forgiveness. I learned that God had already forgiven me. The greatest thing I, I gained over that weekend was the ability to forgive myself. Today, what I want all of you to know is that abortion is wrong for women, and we deserve better. That is why I'm here to tell you that I'm silent no more. Thank you for listening. I stand here before you today with a profound humility and great sadness, yet joy and peace. I thank God for his unimaginable mercy and forgiveness. It was in January of 1976, 31 years ago, that I permitted the abortion of my son, whom we have named Ryan Paul. I was only 17 and on a dangerous yet ignorant path of sexual, sexual exploration with the young love of my life. We knew we were in love, but thought not about the consequences of our growing intimate activity. When I learned that she was pregnant, we were stunned, and things happened very quickly. I should have been responsible enough to know better. I should have been responsible enough to protect my unborn son and protect the mother of my child from a horrible, misguided, irreversible choice. Today and every day, I ache with incredible pain over the most significant choice of my life, one that I can never reverse. Today, I would do anything. I would give up anything to have that choice back. 
if I could only have the courage to say no. Instead, I said nothing. I was afraid, timid, and complicit by my silence. Our entire family support system was swallowed into a surreal acceptance of abortion as a silent, secret solution, the quick fix for this problem. Had there been anyone, friends, parents, anyone to have offered a choice, an option, and some support, we might have listened and chosen life. Deep, deep down inside, I knew the truth. This was our baby, not just cells. But no, I said nothing, and I did nothing, but accompany her along with her mother to Planned Parenthood to destroy my child. During the procedure, I felt numb and helpless. For this monumental failure, I take full responsibility. From that moment, there was a chilling silence about the abortion. It was not spoken of again by anyone for many, many years. My response to the pain was to block my emotions with the hardness of my heart. I also felt trapped into accepting the lie of choice, the supposed right to choose death over life. To believe otherwise would mean facing my own guilt. Because of this personal experience, I understand the trap and the lie of choice that imprisons so many. This young lady and I somehow were endured, and God blessed us with marriage five years later. And through the next 20 years or so, we have struggled through her bouts of depression, low self-esteem, and the buried guilt of her lost motherhood, the life that had been sucked away and forgotten by everyone else, but not her. I now understand and believe that a woman's love for her child is stamped into her heart by God. Her baby cannot be ripped away without devastating and permanent consequences. The wound is forever, the problem not solved. About three years ago, we found repentance and reconciliation through the amazing retreat program called Rachel's Vineyard. We, had learned, we learned that despite our horrible sin, that God still loved us and that he had forgiven us long ago. Finally, we were able to forgive ourselves and those who were involved. The healing process continues with my standing here today as another huge step for me. In fact, I've been out in that audience for the previous two years watching these brave men and women give their testimonies and it has inspired me beyond words. I know there are millions of men like me in pain or living with a hardness of heart that they may not even recognize. I want to tell all men who have participated in an abortion or how had their children aborted against their will to let your heart out of prison. Help and healing is available. I thank God for his strength and the courage within me to speak out and defend my child and his dear mother. The pain of my lost fatherhood remains with me every day. But now through God's grace, I live with the joy of forgiveness and peace. Now I want to help stop this madness by being silent no more. One by one with healing, I believe that we can. Thank you and God bless.